Hello my friends, it's Daniel Crosslink, back from my studio here in South Bavaria, the most beautiful federal state of Germany, of course. Before we start today's build, I want to show you something. Can you believe that the Game Boy, the original one, has been released back in 1989? That is 34 years ago. And I remember when I got this for the first time, I think I, I couldn't just believe how great it is and like how many games we can play. And I always had it with me, like all the time, in my bag, when I was on vacation, anywhere. I would take it anywhere with me and would play games all the time. What I find fascinating is that the basic principles how these mobile consoles work are still the same nowadays. So we still have these cartridges that we can put in and we still have like basically the same buttons like with some minor changes. But like if you think about uh, the successors to this, the Color Game Boy or nowadays the, the Steam Deck or Nintendo Switch, basically those controls look like fairly the same. The games themselves I mean, there has been, like, of course, the games are much better today and like better graphics, better sound, anything is like, so much improved. But basically the principles of these games are still the same, right? If you play Super Mario Kart uh, in a modernized version, it basically works the same way as it worked back on the Game Boy. <laughs> Since the Game Boy has been so popular back in the days, uh, there has been so many other clones, like get companies trying to make similar consoles and this is just very recently released i think you got it for 20 bucks last year it has i think 168 games on it right can you believe that uh, that's unbelievable back then you had only one game on one cartridge for the game boy and here you have like basically all of the games that you can ever think of and probably never finish all of them in one device on this little thing for 20 bucks Anyways, today's video is not about these two devices. We're not going to review the old Game Boy. Today's build incorporates a Raspberry Pi 0 W and the WaveShare Game Pi 20, which is a mobile game console utilizing the Raspberry Pi 0 W. And, and compared to these other two old consoles here, this thing can emulate basically anything that you can imagine, PlayStation, all the good games, could be emulated on this device and that's why I'm so excited to build this because you can define what games you want on this device you can always add new ROMs even over Wi-Fi that's why we're using the W version of the Raspberry Pi Zero this thing has plenty of compute power so it can emulate basically any old console so let's get started now for this build, I got myself a Raspberry Pi Zero W starter kit and that contains not only the Raspberry Pi Zero W but all kinds of other accessories like these cases here and additional cables. We don't need all of that. That's good if you want to tinker around with the Raspberry Pi and, and for example build a surveillance camera or generally try out programming the Raspberry Pi Zero so that's, that's great but we don't need that. We just need the bare bone Raspberry Pi Zero and we need the headers here. These header pins you need to solder on. I already prepared that. I have soldered on these header pins here because this is required to connect the Raspberry Pi Zero W to the Game Pi. Also what you need um, is of course an SD card where we're gonna do, where we're gonna put on the software. And I have chosen to use a 64 gigabyte memory card. That should be fine. Now the next part is, let's have a look what's in the WaveShare GamePi 20 package. We have some screws here, tools to assemble and buttons. I think the buttons are going to be put into the case. There we go, this is the GamePi 20 and you see here is the places where we're going to insert the buttons later. And it comes with a little screen and then there are several parts that we need to assemble in a specific order. And here on the back side, you can see there is the connector where we need to put in the Raspberry Pi Zero. It also has a chargeable battery, so we can use it mobile. We don't have to use a cable. A speaker here and also an external connector for headphones. 
Let's take a look at the assembly instructions. By the way, all of the resources, so the parts that I'm using, the tools that I'm using, and the software that I'm using, I'm also linking that down in the description of this video. Some of these links are affiliate links, so if you are purchasing anything through those links, I'm going to get a small commission, but you're not paying more, and with that you're supporting the channel. So I want to thank everyone for using those links. Before we can assemble the RetroPie, we have to prepare the SD card with the proper software because after the assembly, it's not possible to remove or reinsert the SD card because this is completely closed. There's no slot for the SD card here. So we're going to head over to WaveShare's website and figure out what software we want to use. WaveShare is providing detailed instructions how to install the software and also how to do the assembly. The first step here is to choose one of these two pre-configured images if you want to get started quickly. One of the images is running Recalbox, which is one way to emulate all of the games, and then the other one is RetroPie. Both are offering similar simulators. What I read is that Recalbox is a little bit easier to configure, so I'm trying out Recalbox first. After clicking on one of these links here, you will get a zip file that you need to unzip and then you will get an image file, IMG file, that contains the operating system and all of the configuration files prepared for the RetroPie 20, so all of the screen and the buttons should work. How do you get this onto the SD card? So first of all, we need the SD card to be inserted into the SD card reader and then I am using the Raspberry Pi OS Imager. And that's a software that you can download for free and then install on your computer. So I've put the SD card into the slot and now I'm choosing an operating system. Uh, we cannot choose any of those here. We want to choose something uh, custom. We want to choose a custom file from the computer. Um, and I have to go to my user profile download folder. Where is it? And then we have the recall box folder here and the image file. Next, I choose the storage, which is my mass storage USB drive. Make sure you're selecting the right one if you have multiple USB drives connected. The easiest way to not fail and select the wrong one is to disconnect all of the other USB drives and then have only your SD card inserted here. And now we're writing this image to the SD card. Everything's going to get deleted, so want to make sure we're using the right drive. And let's go. Now, while this is happening, I recommend not to click on any of the buttons. There might be windows popping up telling you insert a disk into drive. Like, don't touch anything. Just wait for this process to complete and then you can close other windows if there's any open. If you have an external USB card reader, I highly recommend not to connect it through a USB hub. So if you like, I have a USB hub on my desk here and I tried it, it doesn't work. So if you're wondering why it doesn't work, connect that cable directly to your computer to one of the ports if, you, if you're working on a desktop computer. Like on a mobile computer, probably this is straightforward. Or if you have an internal SD card reader, should also work fine. Now once we see this finishing message, write successful, then we can continue and remove the card from the reader. Next up is to follow the assembly instruction. This guide is fairly simple but straightforward. So first we need to insert the SD card. Next up is to push the Raspberry Pi into the Game Pi board. And you can see this perfectly matches together. You just need to find the right orientation. So this is the wrong orientation obviously. This is the right orientation. So align the pins carefully and I'm going to push it in. Then we can probably remove the screen protector. And now it's time to put the buttons on. So, first thing is putting these rubber pads on. There's two screws on each of the pads here that have been already, re uh, already inserted, but we just want to push the rubber pad over like if this doesn't work, then you can always use some tweezers. It looks fairly easy to do. We want to make sure that we put these colored buttons here in the right position. So I'm going to follow the manual put on top, but then there's, there's no way to fix them. So we have to make sure that they are not falling off. And there's these standoffs. Um, that we're going to use in a second to mount this into the case. 
Now we have to insert the standoffs. Now inserting this into the case. None of these fits any of the standoffs. Why? Anyways, I didn't find any hex nut driver that works, so I need to use my gripper. Let's double check before we assemble this finally that we can use these buttons after the fact. Yeah, yeah, we can push them in. Just wanted to see that. There we go. Yeah, we have the HDMI connection from the Raspberry Pi, so didn't realize that there was actually an outlet for this, but this is nice that so we can also use an external screen. Uh, didn't anticipate that. So let's finish this up. So finally, I guess now we can position the buttons correctly and assemble all of this together. So the cover comes on top. Let's see if our buttons work. Yes. Now we can finally correct the orientations. This one's still missing. Here we go. Four screws come on. Closing this top cover, fixing this top cover. This is starting to look like a game console. Great. Look at that. Already looks beautiful. The assembly seems to be finished. Let's power this thing up. First of all, we need to charge it up using the Raspberry Pi power supply with the micro SB connector. And there's a dedicated charging port here. So not inserting this into the USB port, but really into the charging port. The Raspberry Pi itself has a power port where you can normally power the Raspberry Pi from, but this doesn't make sense because then the battery wouldn't be charging. So this is important to know. Good. And there's also a charging indicator. So the battery is already like almost full. Let's try if this thing is working. So I would say let's turn the console on. Let's see what's gonna happen. There we go. It's booting up. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Let's see what's gonna happen. Oh wow, I mean, the screen resolution is... I can't read anything. <laughs> Seriously? Wow. Oh. Okay, this is all the different emulators. You know what, I guess the best thing is we connect this to my computer so we can see it in full screen. So I'm using the HDMI adapter from the Raspberry Pi kit. Let's see if that works. And, oh yes, nice, nice, nice. Okay. <laughs> Let's try something else. Oh my goodness, this is Game Boy graphics. How can I jump? Okay. And now? I have no idea what I'm doing here. Oh no! Oh my goodness! So I realized I need some practice on this thing to be good in any of these games because they are turning out to be quite difficult. Now, honestly, my, my opinion on this, this is a really nice, I would say proof of concept that it can be done on such a small device. What doesn't really work for me is the screen size. So the screen is so small that realistically to play this mobile, you would have to know exactly what you want to select here. It's really super hard to read the screen. I mean. 
you probably get used to it and you probably learn where are your games and because you can read some stuff here on the screen for sure but it yeah. is probably much better if you connect this to an external monitor which works perfectly as you've seen so to give you a little bit of a size comparison <laughs> this is the original Game Boy and I think it's just right in your hands the perfect size actually and then this smaller clone it's already getting a little bit difficult for me so just just works and then this one is it's i mean playable uh, probably from the control perspective works fine but the screen is definitely too small i would say i would rather want something bigger yeah that has been a fun project i think the next one is going to be definitely something bigger and I will also try out a few more things on this one here. I want to try RetroPie, maybe get the PlayStation emulator to work, but that's something for another video maybe. And then I have another new project coming up here, which is the Pi Station case. A Pi Station case is essentially a case for the Raspberry Pi, and it has also a little screen. And then you can connect a Bluetooth controller, for example, also to run RetroPie or any of these emulators. So another nice project, maybe sometime for the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm gonna try out more stuff here and I wish you a good week. Until next time, see you back on the channel. Hit like if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos and I wish you a good week. Bye bye.